My name is Eric, and we're going to be talking about my battle belt breakdown. So let's roll the intro. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out another Hatchet Cast episode. And today we're going to be talking about my battle belt breakdown that I'm utilizing today. Before we get started, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Also hit the notification bell. We've noticed a lot of people have not been getting uh, our videos popping up on their feed. So when you hit that notification bell, it does help allow you to see when new videos pop up. We're currently on a 10 day posting schedule. So um, 10 days from now will be our next episode, just so that way you guys have essay on that. Also, if you guys have uh, experience with your battle belt, also go to the comment section down below. A lot of people get a lot of information out of there. If you have a question, go to the comment section. There's tons of people that are willing to help you out. The Barrel and Hatchet community is a great one. Uh, there's a couple of trolls in there from time to time, but there is a lot of positive feedback and information that folks get down in that comment section. So make sure you go down there and participate. Today, we're gonna be talking about my battle belt breakdown. And the reason why we're doing that is because of you guys. Uh, enough of y'all put in a request saying, hey, will you do a complete, you know, individual breakdown of everything you're running on your battle belt? Uh, even though we've done battle belt videos in the past, but some things have changed, but we're gonna do an in-depth look at what I'm carrying on the belt today. So we'll, we'll jump into the belt itself, all right? So breaking down the actual belt. Then we'll talk about the accessories that I run on the belt. So like things I need for the range or range tools. Then I'll talk about the pouches that I'm utilizing and the way that I have them set up. And then afterwards, we're gonna get a word from our sponsor, which will be a really quick uh, word from the sponsor. And then we're gonna jump into the blade that I'm running on the belt, followed up by the holster and the, pla the platform that I'm utilizing that holster on and why it's such an important and unique system. And then we'll wrap it all together for the end. So let's go ahead and talk about the belt itself. Now the belt is an inner and outer belt system from Wilder Tactical and it's called the Urban Assault Belt. Now you can buy it as a package. Uh, so for newer shooters, it's a great deal because you gotta think about, you know, trying to figure out what pouches do I need and, and what do I involve and buying everything separate. So they sell an entire Urban Assault Belt package where all the pouches that you would need are already coming with the belt. The cool thing about the uh, Urban Assault Belt is the fact that it is an inner outer system and it also has a padding accessory that you can put on it. So if you don't want to run it as an inner outer belt, you can run that inner pad and it will give you the ability to just put it on over top of your shirt or over top of your pants. Now really quick, I want to give a disclosure about this belt and it is from Wilder Tactical. And we do have a relationship with Wilder Tactical. Uh, this belt and the pouches were given to us. And the reason we partner with Wilder Tactical is because of their incentive to outfit as many prepared citizens as possible with top of the line quality gear. Now, if you look, every tactical gear company that comes out is going to cater to law enforcement and military. But Wilder specifically is wanting to make sure that citizens have the ability to get high quality equipment. And so for us, that rings really, really strong. Um, so we, we really love that about their mission statement. And so that's why we're partnering with them. Now, understand, you know, the Wilder belts in any battle belt you buy, so specifically the Wilder belts can be a little bit pricey, but you got to think about how long that belt is lasting. I, you know, they finally convinced me like, Eric, can you please just run another belt? Like we want to have you run on one of our newer systems. And I was like, well, you know, the belt they had given me before, I had been running that for three to four years. And I was like, I kind of like my belt. Like all of my gear, I specifically, like just breaking it in and getting it used to me and, and having it how I want it. Um, so I very rarely want to try out new stuff when it comes to gear because I have to re-break it in. 
Um, and I just, I like what I like, you know? And, and so my old Wilder belt was just broken in and it was in really, really good shape. In fact, I actually brought it back to them one time to show them like, hey, here's the original belt. And they're like, holy smokes. And the Velcro was still holding up. None of the stitchings had broken. Um, you know, the Cobra buckle was looking great. So uh, yeah, it, it just held up really, really well. And the Velcro on the inner of this is, is amazing. Um, now my, my inner belt system, I actually use to hold up my pants and I just use that every day. And the reason why is because it's just so convenient. So having that inner belt system with no buckle is something I really like. Now they offer a buckle system, like a Cobra buckle inner belt. Um, but for me, I like keeping it simple because I don't have the buckle. I don't have the extra tail for the adjustment. It's just a nice, simple way. I can just put it on and off. Um, adjust it how I need it really, really quick. My wife absolutely hates it because she's like, you're wearing a Velcro belt everywhere. Um, but, you know, it's very practical and I'm a, I like practicality. So the other cool thing about the, the Urban Assault belt is the fact that it utilizes slots. So a lot of battle belts out there utilize a Molly system and it's really hard to kind of weave through that molly sometimes. So these slots are nice and big, super open, a lot of space. So that way you can actually use the Urban Assault clips with their pouches and just slide them in and they actually screw into place with Loctite on the end of those screws. So it's, it's, it's super solid. Um, and it's easy to shift things around. Like you're not like hurting your fingers trying to freaking pry this molly apart. And also, uh, if you wanna use a molly pouch, you can actually use a molly system pouch onto that urban belt slot, um, urban assault belt slot. So that's really, really nice. Now the, the Cobra buckle is a legitimate Cobra buckle. If you get a battle belt from Amazon, like a cheapo one for like 50 bucks, 99% of the time it's gonna have a cheap knockoff Cobra buckle. Um, and if you do anything with like rescue or helo ops or anything like that, you gotta make sure you have a legit Cobra buckle um, because they are rated for certain things. So. Uh, they do use a legit real Cobra license buckle and also they have a flap retainer that comes on their uh, Urban Assault belt. So that flap retainer actually has a little buckle, like a little clip, so you can clip like gloves or whatever to it, um, you know, lens cleaner or whatever. Um, but as far as the that flap retainer, I actually, um, because the Cobra buckle, it, as you pick it up and put it in your tough box and pull it out or hang it up on a hanger, um, it ends up coming loose because of the Cooper buckle itself. And so you have to kind of like tighten it back down when you put it on. So I actually got a tail clamp from Subsecond Belts. And if you're looking for another belt alternative, Subsecond's a newer company. They're veteran owned. It's owned by a, a, a you know, Green Beret. And he makes a really, really high quality belt. So go check him out uh, if you guys also want to see an alter alternative belt option. Um, but they also use Cobra buckles and they also have a tail clamp. So he, he was like, hey, can you try out my tail clamp? And I was like, sure. So it's literally two pieces of metal and you screw it into place where it locks and clamps that, that excess tail from your belt when you tighten it down so it doesn't ever come loose. So I really like that system. Uh, it's really, really nice. If you already have a belt or a Wilder belt, I would highly recommend looking into the tail clamp. It's very convenient. And also the tail retainer that Wilder has is also convenient because it has that clip. So it just makes it all around nice. Um, now, when it comes to your um, Urban Assault belt, the other thing that I love about that belt specifically is the fact that it has more molly that wraps all the way around my waist versus going only up to my sides and on my back. So most belts sometimes don't have enough molly coverage all the way around the waist or uh, slot coverage all the way around the waist. So on the Wilder belts, they made sure that you have a ton of slot coverage where it goes almost completely all the way around your waist, leaving a little bit of room for the buckle and some of that adjustment in the flap. So if you do buy it, make sure that you're actually sized correctly. Uh, so that way you can get the right belt that's fit for you. And so, you know, the sizing is very important and that's how they're able to make sure that they have more Molly slot coverage uh, around the waist. So yeah, go out and check the Wilder Tactical belt. But um, if you get your belt or you already have a belt and you're looking to get some accessories uh, for your belt to make sure you have a successful range day, that's what we're about to jump into next.
Now, one of the accessories I really like is also from Wilder Tactical, and it's more of a maintenance admin thing, but it is a belt hanger. Um, so Wilder sells this plastic belt hanger. You can actually buy it with your belt. Uh, I think it's like 10 or 15 bucks. But I used to take my belt and I used to wrap it, like close it in on itself in a loop, and then hang it on a hanger, and it just took up too much space. So um, this belt hanger allows you to clip it into the Cobra buckle, and then you just hang it in your closet. So it's super convenient, takes up less room in your closet, um, and it's just an all around a good idea. So I do like that hanger. The other thing I like to have is I like to have S carabiners on my belt, and it's good for just clipping on my nano tools, which I talk about in a little bit, and also my gloves. It's super convenient. The other thing you can use it for is if you're running like say, you know, you wanna for whatever reason turn your two point sling into a single point sling, you can clip the S carabiner to that and clip it to itself and now you get a single point. Um, it, there's just tons of capabilities with S carabiners for admin type roles. So it's super convenient. So I like running the S carabiner versus a standard carabiner uh, specifically for convenience. Now understand these next accessories that I clip onto the S carabiner are specifically just for range, range isms, range tools and admin stuff. Um, obviously if I'm gonna be going out into a combat scenario or preparedness scenario or going out on a mission set and trying to hide or do whatever, I'm probably not going to have a bunch of jangling tools jangling from my belt. So uh, make sure you police that type of stuff. At one point, my older belt, I had actually taped my, you know, put duct tape or gaffer's tape around the D-ring on my Cobra buckle. So when I clip my helo lanyard to it or a carabiner, it wouldn't make a bunch of clinking noises like, like this does uh, with my, my bracelet. Um, but you don't want to have that. So just something to consider, maybe taping that stuff up with like athletic tape or gaffer's tape um, if you are going to run a, bear, a carabiner on the D-ring. So I do like having the nano tools and it's specifically for sighting in weapons or, you know, ad making adjustments, uh, tightening things down. They're super convenient. They're super small. And I put them on keychain rings. Um, I also took a hollow sun tool. How many guys know about if you've ever tried adjusting a hollow sun red dot, it's such a pain in the butt trying to get a flathead screwdriver in there. So the hollow sun tool works really good. You get it anytime you buy something from hollow sun. So I just drilled a hole through the hollow sun tool and put it on the key ring. Uh, and that just makes it where I have everything I need to be able to help a student or myself or a buddy uh, and make adjustments or fix things on the range. The other thing I like having is a lens cloth and um, the lens cloth I actually got was from ADM and they use it for like marketing and most gun companies will give this stuff away at like shows so if you go to a show or whatever be like yo man I don't want the stickers or a patch just give me like five of those lens cloth things because they're so useful and it's from a company called spuds you can actually buy them a standalone on Amazon and they're really really cheap the clip is actually made out of plastic so it doesn't make any noise and it just helps me to you know I use it for wiping off my glasses um, I use it for wiping off like lenses um, my, my red dots or any scopes. Um, I have a separate one that doesn't have oil and stuff and grease on it that I will actually keep in a separate bag that I use to uh, wipe off night vision goggles. So uh, it's just a super convenient thing to have and you always have it on the range. Um, my old school way of doing it is I used to have a huge lens cloth that I just poked a hole through and clipped it to the S carabiner. So I had a lens cloth for wiping off my lenses and stuff like that. Um, it is also good as a range tool to be able to wipe off your hands and things of that nature. But um, yeah, the other thing I have is I have a Mark II holster with a permanent marker that's inside of it. You can actually get the Mark II holster from our website and it is such a good and convenient range tool. If you've ever been to one of our classes, we say, hey, you need to be bringing a permanent marker. And the cool thing about this is when you pull the marker, it automatically decaps it. So that way you don't have to hold a marker cap in one hand. You can have one hand on your rifle while you're holding it and you're marking up your targets and you can do it single-handed. Um, Todd, our medical instructor from uh, Guardian Angel Consulting, actually said that it's really useful if you're trying to mark patients and you need one hand to be able to be free. So it's just an easy way to demark it or uh, decap the marker. Um, and it's a Milwaukee marker. Uh, we, we switched it specifically to the Milwaukee because the Sharpie you know, would run out of ink fast or would not mark on certain surfaces. And the Milwaukee marker will actually write on multiple different types of surfaces and is more capable uh, for marking. 
stuff. So um, make sure you go pick up a Mark II holster. It's a really convenient tool. We've seen construction workers use them. We've seen medical staff use them. Um, they're good for your gun belt. You can have it on your tool bag. It literally, anywhere where you would need a marker, it's really convenient. Um, so yeah, I like to keep my Mark II holster on the front of my belt so I can use it to mark all those misses. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, I got all these accessories, but uh, one of the more important things is my pouches and how I have them set up. So let's go ahead and talk about pouches next. Now, working from the very front of the, or my right side of my belt, because I am a left-handed shooter uh, for life, so, I like having the dual pistol mag pouches where it is actually a UAB clip that has an adjusting uh, or swiveling pistol mag uh, base. So if you look at the pistol mag pouches on Wilder Tactical, they actually have one where it's dual and you can adjust how much can't you want to have them. And I like to have my pistol mags right where my pockets are because when I put my hands in my pockets, it's so natural, I don't have to think about it. So when I put my mags there for reloading, it's just like, the same motion that I do for going and putting my hand in my pocket. So it's easier to grab that, that pistol mag to be able to get quicker loads. And also it's more intuitive to be able to re put that magazine back in my pouch whenever I'm, you know, doing a reload or attack reload or uh, doing stuff in the dark specifically. So I like having that. It's super nice. I'm not a big proponent of stacking pouches on pouches, meaning uh, having a rifle mag pouch and then having a pistol mag pouch on the outside of that, because I don't want to get wider. So I want to try to keep things as slim line and close to my body as I possibly can. It just makes it less clumsy. So uh, I only run two pistol mag pouches. I have one pistol or pistol mag in the gun, so it gives me three mags total. Worst case scenario, I can pull stuff out of a bag if I need to um, or put them in my dump pouch, but usually that's never the case. If I do have more pistol mags on me, it's specifically for teaching a pistol class. So um, I like to have those in that area, and that's why I have it set up like that. Behind the pistol mag pouches, I have a, AR, a single AR-15 pouch. Um, a lot of students ask me like, Eric, why don't you have multiple mags on your belt? And my answer for that is I used to. Um, and uh, the problem was, is when I would have body armor on or chest rig on, because I wanted to have other things on my belt, I ran out of room. And also I was reaching behind me, so I had to torque my body to reach that other mag. Um, so I just put one mag on my belt. And that was actually from a, another instructor that I learned from where he says, hey man, just use that one mag pouch and call it your ready mag. So whenever you have to do an emergency reload, AKA a speed reload, you pull from that one magazine pouch because it's so easy to re reload from the belt. And then worst case scenario, you start pulling from your vest or your chest rig. But what you need to do is whenever you pull from that ready mag, and you utilize it, make sure you tack reload that pouch off of your vest or your bag or your chest rig. So that way you always have a full magazine ready to go in your ready mag pouch. And if you kind of follow that process where you're always keeping it topped off, you really only need one magazine pouch. So um, outside of that, I would just carry extra mags in my dump pouch if I need more. Uh, but having it as a first line of gear, um, you know, at least I have one, one mag in the rifle, one mag on my belt. Worst case scenario, I just throw a drum mag in my rifle or a 40 round coupled mag with a 30 round. So I have 60 rounds total in the gun and I have another round, uh, mag on my belt out of my ready mag. You know, I get a good amount of firepower. So, um, for me, I don't like to have two mags on my belt because I have other things that I want on there that I need more room for. So, um, if I need more mags, I pull them from my chest rig or from my body armor. Now behind my, um, the pouch that I have skipping over what I, the blade portion, I'll talk about that later, but behind that I have a dump pouch and my dump pouch is also from Auto Tactical. All of these pouches use the universal assault belt clips. So they're the super swift clips that have the screw in uh, retainer. And the dump mag pouch is super small, like it's real compact. I used to use a, a Blue Force gear dump pouch and I loved it because it was so compact but the material of the the pouch itself was like a parachute type material for those who you know used to do jumping or whatever or did skydiving it's like a parachute material and, it, and it's super lightweight and it compacts real small but it rips really easy so the dump mag pouch from Wilder is really big I love that it's it's like a giant bucket 
Um, if I need to, that flap that actually holds it contained, you can put that over top to close the pouch off if you don't want things flopping out of it when you have stuff inside the pouch. Um, and it's just really big. It has a drain hole at the bottom. It's bomb proof, it's rugged, it's durable. It's just a really simple pouch. And so for dumping stuff into it, I usually, if I need to, as a first line of gear, if I need water, I just throw a couple water bottles in my dump pouch. So um, overall, I use it a lot. And it used to, I used to have two dump pouches on there. One of them was from Lunar Concepts. It was a Lunar Concepts chute that had a leg strap on it. Um, but I took that off so that way I could put my blade system on there. Um, and then I had that one because it was a bigger dump pouch that was more of an open bucket. Uh, so anyways, that's the dump pouch that I'm running. And we'll go immediately to the left of that and talk about my IFAC. Now my IFAC pouch is probably my favorite IFAC pouch I've ever had. And the reason for that is because in that IFAC pouch, one, it comes pre-packed from Wilder Tactical. So you can either buy just the pouch or you can buy the full system that has a vacuum sealed IFAC full of North American Rescue kit inside of it. Um, we had Todd, our medical instructor from Guardian Angel Consulting, look at the IFAC to see, hey, is everything in here good? And he was like, dude, Everything in this is legit. So it's a good solid IFAC. One thing that we see from a lot of folks is they have either, the IFAC doesn't have enough stuff in it, or it has, it's a massive IFAC and it's just like this big. Um, so it's just like too big. Or it's one of those quick release pull IFACs. And uh, I actually used to run a Blue Force gear IFAC. I've seen plenty of other ones that have like those quick pull, quick deploy IFACs. The problem is, is when you start walking around in the woods or you start walking around in the brush, and for those who've done it, especially at night, there's things that grab and pull at every piece of kit that you have, and if it's not tied down, it's gonna go. Well, I've we've had students in our night vision class that have lost IFACs that had those quick deploy style IFACs. And so something would grab the pouch and just pull the IFAC out, and now you're out 90 bucks, you know? Like med gear is not cheap. So. A lot of guys who had those, you, you know, at my old unit, or actually the unit I'm still at, we have those IFACs, they would take rubber bands or bungee and physically like secure them in there or even tape it closed. So it's a good concept. I don't know if it's practically a good thing um, unless there's a more secure way of doing it. And that's why I like the IFAC from Water Tactical because it's so simple. You can put the entire thing in there. It's not small where you have to try and force things in. It's big enough. It's, it's the perfect size. It's just a good size and it's super simple. It's just a Velcro flap, call it a day. Um, you know, the sides are elastic so it can kind of expand if you wanna put more stuff in there. And the bottom has molly on it so that way you can put the, your Wilder Tactical tourniquet holder or your own tourniquet pouch on the bottom of it and have your tourniquet and IFAC all together in one piece and it's not ginormous. Uh, so I like that. I also have it a little bit offset you know, I used to have it in the center of my back, but when I would sit in a vehicle, it was annoying because I had this giant, you know, there, this pouch that was digging into my back. So I kind of offset it a little bit so it's not in the center of my back, just so that way it can clear the seat whenever I'm sitting down in a vehicle. Um, but yeah, moving forward to the IFAC, I have um, my holster, but we'll talk about that in a different uh, segment, different chapter. But in front of the holster, I have my Leatherman pouch. And I think it was just the military for all the Air Force guys or military guys, you're always ingrained to have a Leatherman or a multi-tool on you at all times. So I actually have a multi-tool on me right now. It's a Leatherman Skeletal. So go check out our EDC video for more information on that. But on my belt, I actually have the Leatherman Mutt, which is specifically a weapons maintenance Leatherman. Um, and the reason why I have that is because it has all the different types of things for doing maintenance on the range or helping students in class with maintenance, but it also has a sighting tool that it comes with. So, you know, it just makes it really convenient if I need to zero iron sights or whatever, that it gives me that tool naturally. It gives me different types of bits for taking down rifles or pulling things apart. Um, and it comes with its own pouch. So I like having my Leatherman on me. Um, you don't have to have a Leatherman. You can get, you know, a Gerber or whatever. Just make sure you have a pouch that allows you to have a multi-tool on your first line of gear. Now, moving forward to that, uh, at the very front, I have a old Tactical Tailor hand grenade pouch. And uh, I've actually had that one for a long time, uh, probably actually think from the time I was in the service. And what's cool about it is the Leatherman pouch and that grenade pouch are both Molly on pouches and they fit on that belt. So 
The inside of the pouch has like a rubber lining, so it kind of keeps things dry, whatever's inside. And inside a grenade pouch is a perfect size for a compass. And uh, ever since the military, it's been ingrained in me to always have a compass on you. So I have a compass on my body armor, I have a compass on my chest rig, and I have a compass on my battle belt. And that way, no matter what I ditch, I always have a compass on me, and I even have a button compass on my watch. So for, I don't know why old habits die hard, but I always keep a lensatic military style compass on me. So that way, if I'm down to just my belt, I still have the ability to navigate and have orientation of where I'm at. Um, so I never get lost. So um, it's a really good pouch. If you want to get a good compass pouch, just buy an old grenade pouch. Tactical Tailor still makes great stuff. So go check them out if you want to get one of those pouches. And always have your uh, compass on you. I have that actually lanyard off, lanyarded off to the inside of the pouch with the compass lanyard. So that way I don't lose it. Um, but it's just super convenient to have a compass, especially a really good compass that is rugged and been proven. So that's what I have as far as my pouches. Now, you know, when it comes to blades, we're gonna talk about that next. Real quick though, we're gonna do a quick word from our sponsor. So we're gonna roll right into that. And then as soon as that's done, I'm gonna talk about the blade that I have on the belt. So if you're looking for a Gerber or a Lensatic Compass or supplies for your next build, go check out Sportsman's Guide. And what's really cool about Sportsman's Guide is one, they have tons of high quality products like from all the brands that you know. They've got the full line of Vortex Optics. They have EOTech, Leopold. Uh, as far as like camping, fishing, ATVs, truck, you know, trucks and four by fours, uh, patio furniture, they've got all kinds of stuff. If you are an outdoorsman or a prepared citizen, or uh, you know, a professional that carries guns for a living and you need that type of stuff, Sportsman's Guide has it for you. Um, you know, They even have what kind of caught my eye was the military surplus line that they have. So if you wanted to get a lensatic compass like I have on my belt, you can go check out Sportsman's Guide and they have like Romanian stuff and all kinds of cool, like I had a shovel from some European country that was really neat for cheap. And the cool thing is if, if you are part of their membership program, you actually get 10% off most items and you also get 5% off ammo. Uh, they do have other sales on there that you can get, but um, as far as anything that's over $49, you get free shipping. So if you end up picking up a Lensatic Compass or a Leatherman Mutt, you get free shipping on it. Um, one of the big things that I saw is they have a huge line of outdoor clothing as well. So if you're looking for like mountain hardware or Keen boots or Danner, I wear Keen boots specifically. Um, and what's cool about that is I can go to Sportsman's Guide and get the same pair of boots that I've always been wearing. I've literally been buying the same pair and the same model for like the past three years. So being able to save some money on my next pair of Keen boots is gonna be really nice. So the Buyers Club members also not just get free shipping, but you can also, if you want to have things that be a little bit more affordable with your budget, they do a program where you can do four split up payments that are interest free. So that way you can get the items that you need and also kind of budget that a little bit more easily, especially in today's economy. So if you're looking for anything regarding outdoor equipment or stuff to be more prepared or military surplus gear, look no further than Sportsman's Guide. We do have a link to save some money down in the description below. So go check them out and make sure you sign up for Sportsman's Guide membership today. All right. Now we're gonna go back to talking about the blade weapon system. Now, talking about the blade, I uh, am actually experimenting with the blade that I'm using right now, and uh, I'm using a Tor Knives Tommy uh, Tomahawk F13, and it was actually a gift from Ben, a good friend of mine over at Wiseman Company. So if you haven't already, go check out Ben's uh, YouTube channel. Go check out his website. He sells a bunch of EDC stuff. Uh, he deals specifically in Lunar Concepts gear. Uh, so uh, they have tons of great stuff on their website. So go check them out. And also go check out his YouTube channel. He has great content on that channel. And uh, yeah, so Impact 300. anyways, he bought me this thing for Christmas and uh, Ben loves giving gifts. And so, I was like, oh my goodness. So I stuck it on my belt, took the took a dump pouch off and put it on my belt to see how it does. And so far I'm kind of experimenting with it. My big thing is I'm looking to see how well it's retained because um, I wanted to always have a tomahawk on my kit somewhere. 
So it does use a bungee retention and it came with that extra, that, that tomahawk sheath. Um, it's super small and compact and it's just a great chopping tool for a uh, tertiary weapon system. I used to have a, uh, a push dagger from Benchmade. It's actually the same or similar concept that you guys can find at Wilder Tactical. They, they, they partnered with Strew Knives to develop a push dagger, but I actually came up with that concept where you can attach the dagger on the actual holster platform that they sell. So um, I had come up with that years ago and I was like, hey man, this, this works. And uh, they're like, all right, well, let's try it out. So it took off, but I was walking through the woods and actually that dagger got pulled out. So that was kind of heartbreaking. So I've been looking for a new blade system to have on there. And so Ben got me this tomahawk. So far, I love it, dude. It's uh, out of the way. The only thing is, is if I sit in a vehicle, I have to kind of sit in a position where the tomahawk handle kind of, you know, doesn't interfere with the seat, or I just take the tomahawk out and have it sitting on my lap. Um, so that's something I'm contending with. It does use a quick uh, clip-on system that locks, so that way you can clip it onto the belt itself. Um, but it's easy to deploy. It's really, really clean looking, and it's just a sick tomahawk. So. Uh, that's currently the blade system I'm using. I'm looking for a fixed blade that's small enough and discreet enough that I can put on my kit uh, that also won't get snagged when I'm doing things. So um, yeah, I'm open to suggestions if you guys have them, but right now I'm running the F13 Tommy from Tor Knives. So, you know, yeah, obviously I have my tertiary weapon system, which is the, tom the Tomahawk. Let's talk about the holster platform that I use to carry my pistol now. So the holster system that I'm using is obviously the Safari Land. I have the uh, MMP metal that I'm utilizing. We actually have done a video on the MMP metal 2.0. It's a great pistol. I'm running the 507 competition on that, as well as the Surefire X300V Vampire Ultra, actually X300 Ultra Vampire Light, which gives me IR capability. Um, and overall, it's a great system. I love running that gun. The holster model and for anybody that runs a MMP Smith & Wesson and a Surefire Light or a TLR1 Light, this is the model, so go ahead and get ready to write this down. The model number is 6390RDS-8182, and this is the 5-inch model. So I recommend, guys, if you have an MMP and you're running a, a 4 and a quarter, I would still recommend getting a 5-inch because it allows you to get a threaded barrel and then you have the, the barrel length room to be able to run a threaded barrel. Right now, as far as a threaded barrel, I'm running the Griffin Armament uh, barrel, and it comes with their micro comp, which actually is kind of nice. It takes a little bit of the bite off of the recoil. Um, at the end, guys, I'm not a big, I'm not a comp guy. Uh, I, I think that having good fundamentals and strong grip is more than enough to be able to handle all that recoil. Uh, but the fact that the micro comp is so small and it's also a thread protector mainly, uh, is why I have it on there. And it, it's, it's, it's legit. So it's a look cool system. I love that it's super small and compact. It's a thread protector that also gives me a little bit of compensation. Uh, and so that's why I run it. But on my holster, I'm use the multi holster platform from Wilder Tactical. And, and what's really special about this platform is one, it obviously uses the unit, the urban assault belt slots. Uh, but it has so many different points of adjustment. So you can actually, you know, adjust the holster to be straight up and down. You can have a negative cant, which is what I like. I like to have actually more of a straight up and down uh, holster placement. And it, it, it also comes with the Safari Land adapter plate. So it, it's really convenient. The one thing I've seen from guys who run like metal plates for their, their platform have complained about it being really kind of um, sore whenever they wear it for a long period of time because it pushes into their leg. And so I've never experienced that with the multi-holster platform. It's made out of plastic and it's never given me a bruise. It's never rubbed me raw. Uh, it's been really, really nice. And I think that also has in part to do with the articulating leg strap portion. Uh, that assembly articulates so that way I can put my leg strap on they offer those leg straps in multiple different colors and it uses a micro, co micro cobra buckle. And because that thing articulates, 
it doesn't torque on the actual platform. So if I have just a, like an old, like I used to, I used to have an old Safari Land leg strap and it was elastic. And what I had to do is anytime I squatted or whatever, or moved my leg or ran, it would pull on that, that holster platform because there's no articulation. So it's actually kinking the belt and actually pulling on that, which ends up hurting your leg in the long run. So that articulation completely allows the holster to be straight up and down. There's no stress or force put on the platform itself. And my leg is able to move up and down with that platform articulating with my leg. And I don't, I don't really tighten down the, the leg strap that hard. I used to back in the day because you had to, especially with the old drop legs, the old double drop leg system in order to prevent that holster from flopping around. But with this mid-length drop um, or mid-ride, you don't need to tighten it down super hard. I just have it tightened down enough where the holster doesn't flop side to side whenever I'm running around. So um, that is by far the most comfortable drop leg system I have ever run. Uh, and it is absolutely incredible. They used to modify the old Safari Lands and now they came out with their multiple uh, position and adjustable drop leg system. Uh, and it is, if you, don't get one of their belts, get that. That thing is amazing. Uh, super, super comfortable, uh, doesn't break the bank, allows you to get different color leg straps if you want, and it's just a really, really good product. They put a lot of thought behind it. So I love it a lot. But that's what I'm running for my drop leg system. Now, putting everything together, I, you know, constantly advocate for training. Um, one is it's good to train with this stuff, obviously on the flat range, duh. If you're gonna be shooting, you gotta train with that on the flat range. But I also encourage you to go walk around the woods, throw on some body armor, um, put on a ruck, and that's how you figure out where your holster placement's gonna be. If you're going to be doing night vision stuff, obviously that will also help you identify where uh, holster, you know, pouches are placed and where you want your holster and stuff like that. Whenever I put my belt on as well, over time I figured this out, I will physically place my holster where I need it to be, and I will start with that, and then I'll wrap the rest of the belt around and clip it in. So when I do that, I have that pouch placement determined based off of where I place my holster when I put the belt on initially. So um, that's super important. If you wanna be consistent, obviously I have consistency in my fundamentals, but I'm also consistent with my gear placement, so that way I'm not relearning where pouches are and trying to find where new things are at. So. For me, I like running the same gear all the time. That way it makes me more familiar with it. I can do things without looking at it. Uh, I know where every pouch is by feel, where stuff's at, what I need to access. Um, but also going and walking the woods and going and doing things that allow you to wear your gear and see you know, where things rub you raw, where things make you sore, where I can't access something because my body armor is prohibiting me from getting to that pouch or what, what have you. Um, but that's what I also encourage you guys to do when you go out and train, not just on the flat range, but go train on practical things like just walking around and making sure nothing gets ripped out. Um, so if you guys want to come train, obviously we love you guys coming and training with us. We do have fighting carbine courses as well as fighting pistol courses. We're going to be hosting, you know, scoop carbine courses up north in the Panhandle. We had a great trip at Element Training Center up in the Panhandle. It was amazing up there. Uh, so great guys, amazing crew, a really good community. But make sure you go check out our website. It's a great way to support the channel is come train with us. We love training with you guys. Um, it's super, super cool meeting meeting, uh, meeting all of you guys in the community. And it's, it's super rewarding. Uh, also go check out our lifetime membership. The lifetime membership gives you, uh, it, one, it's the cost of two classes. So if you take a two-day course, it's the same cost as lifetime membership. And it gives you the two free classes your first year you sign up, and then it gives you a free class every year. Um, so that's a huge bonus, it's a way for us to give back. And also it gives you access to a closed off lifetime membership group chat that you can be a part of on our website. And also if you've ever been a student of ours in a class, you also get access to a student only group chat. So that way guys who are alumni in our classes can converse and network and communicate and ask each other questions and, and be able to have that as an asset to you. So make sure you go check out our lifetime membership. You will get a free hat and a free patch with your lifetime membership. And also we are going to be interacting with our lifetime members once a week. 
So that way you guys can have input on what's being put on the channel, uh, different videos that you want us to do, and we'll also bounce ideas off of you guys to see you know, things that we should talk about next. Guys, if you haven't done so already, check out our Hatchet Cast podcast on YouTube. We are also on Spotify. It's the same, same episodes. We just put them on different platforms. We're also on Rumble. So every video that goes on YouTube is also on Rumble. And we are actually recording a Hatchet Cast podcast tonight. And we talk about everything from current events. You know, sometimes we get a little bit conspiratorial. Uh, we talk about uh, the Bible and scripture and the true mission that matters and about your soul and spirituality. We also talk about gun stuff and the community and what direction things are going. Uh, but we talk about all kinds of stuff. It's a lot of fun. So make sure you check out that channel uh, either on Spotify and on YouTube. And also check out our Instagram and our X account. We have behind the scenes type information, you know, when things are being restocked that are on the website, uh, upcoming classes, and any behind the scenes type stuff we put on those platforms. So make sure you go check that out. In the end, guys, make sure you go out and train. If you are training or you've been to a class of ours, make 2024 the year of training. And also go show somebody else if they're new to guns or whatever, you know, start helping train them in the right way. Uh, a great way to reinforce information in yourself is to go teach it to somebody. So make sure we help breed a good, responsible trainer or a shooter, and also add more people into the community. The community needs to keep growing and keep going in a positive direction, especially during these trying times. So anyways, guys, go out and train, and make sure you're the asset and not the liability. We'll see you on the next one.